we're grabbing the very end of our limb that we want to apply inverse kinematics to, and that will apply to every limb. And we're doing this in edit mode. We're first selecting the armature. We're moving into edit mode so we can edit the individual bones. And I'm selecting the little knob right at the very end of our limb. By choosing E, I can grow a new bone from that. Selecting Z on the keyboard constrains that bone so it goes straight down. X will constrain it to the left and right. Z will keep it vertical. We don't need a big giant bone here. We just need something to target. So we'll click when it's, you know, relatively about the same size as the other bones, I guess. And because we don't want this to actually be part of the armature, this is just going to be a target. We're going to select the entire bone by clicking on it once while still in edit mode. And we're going to reparent it. The way we do this is hit P on the keyboard. Hey, wait a minute, that stands for parenting. Separate bones, yes please. I've just separated that bone from the rest of the armature. It now exists on its own, unrelated. I can go back into object mode now and click on that unrelated bone and rename it by choosing Bone Properties tab. You'll see that it's already renamed Front Leg L002 because it is the next line in this bone hierarchy. So we can kind of leave that actually. It works out pretty good. And we'll just call it Target front leg L.002. Put target in front so it's easy for us to see. So I've made this bone a target. I want the next bone in the hierarchy to target that bone. What that means is I want it to, to constantly be focused on this bone that we've just created as a target. So I'll click once again on my armature. And this time I'll go into pose mode. Now that I'm in pose mode, I can select that last bone, the one that is pointing directly at my target, that's a, that was once attached to my target bone. Siblings. And I'm going to choose Bone Constraint Properties. It's a little tab on the right hand side here. You'll choose Add Bone Constraint Inverse Kinematics. Click on that, and it will allow us to choose our target. Click on the eyedropper, and then click on the bone that we created as a target. One more step, just make sure that that bone is selected as it is here in the next drop down. It will be the only bone available to you. So once again, we'll click the eyedropper, select the bone we want to target. And when you click the bone to specifically target underneath, it will be the only one available to you. Now, whenever I move this target bone, the bones that are connected in the hierarchy will follow it don't believe me? Let's pop into object mode, select that bone, hit G on the keyboard to move it, and watch what happens. Zoom out a little bit, and you can see that it's actually affecting our entire chain. Whenever I move that target, because everything is interconnected, Everything moves along with it. Pretty cool. Probably not what you want. There's a way to fix that. Select our armature and we're going to adjust some properties. Back into pose mode. 
select that bone that's following this target and we're going to specify what's called the chain links. The chain links actually refers to the bone links. Why didn't they call it bone links? Your guess is as good as mine. Google it. Chain length will be two bones. I have two bones within this artwork. One, two for the chain links. Now this target will only affect two bones up from it. Ah, you're doubtful. Go back to object mode. Click on the target bone. And there you see that only those two limbs are moving. Oh, did I say limbs? Only those two bones are moving. Pretty cool. You've just set up an inverse kinematics armature in Blender. Wow.